Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. In this video, we will be removing and reinstalling an airbag clock spring in a 2009 Chevy Suburban. If you need this part or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1aauto.com. We're gonna remove the airbag. Before we do that, we wanna make sure we take the key out, make sure the steering wheel is straight with the wheels going straight ahead, and we're gonna disconnect the battery. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter wrench. We're gonna disconnect the negative post on the battery. Just loosen this up a little bit. And I can grab it and wiggle it back and forth. I can take it and put it up, tuck it out of the way. Once the battery's disconnected, before we go to work on the airbag, we want to wait one minute. That will drain all the capacitors uh, out of the modules and it'll be safe to work on. Okay. To disconnect the airbag, we're going to need a blunt tool. Um, this was actually a straight pick that had broken anyway, so we just filed down a little bit to make it flat. So what you're going to do is right in this hole over here, you're going to have to feel around and I'll show you once I pull the airbag out where it is, but there is a little spring that you have to push on that retains the airbag in there. It's somewhat difficult to do. Gotta feel around for it. And then push a little pressure and then pull. And we're gonna do the same with the other side. Push that down and this pulls right up. And this is where it's clipped in. And I'll show you those little springs in here. As you can see, my blunt tool is in here. So you have to feel around here. And when it's in place, you're pushing that in. It's somewhat difficult to do, but if you feel around, you can you can push it in. To disconnect the connectors, I'm going to use a straight blade tool. Just get underneath this lock right here. You could use a pick also. Pull that out. And pull the other one out as well. Just get under there. Pull that. You can actually just pull it up. The other one pulled out completely. And then there's two retainers here, uh, two locks. I'm gonna push those in. I'm gonna use my finger for one, and screwdriver for the other, and then I'll pull out. So those are the two locks. And then same with the white one. Pull that out. And we can pull the airbag out. We want to set this down on a bench, just like this. Make sure there's nothing electrical near it. You do not want to set it on its face. You want a 13 16 socket extension and a ratchet. And put it on the nut. We're going to hold the steering wheel. And just break it loose. So before I pull the nut off completely, um, the steering wheel is stuck down. What you can do is to get it off, just shake the wheel back and forth gently. While you're pulling up. And sometimes you actually need a puller. This one, I was just able to wiggle it back and forth. You wanna be careful not to Pull too hard or you're bend, you'll bend the steering wheel. But if you use a puller, you can put the puller in those two holes and put the center in there. 
but leaving the nut on there will prevent the steering wheel from hitting you in the face while you're removing it. Now we can remove the nut. Now the steering wheel is keyed, so it only goes on one way. There's a little key on there, so you don't have to worry about marking it on this vehicle. Pull that up. Now we're gonna disconnect this connector. We use a straight blade screwdriver. Just stick it underneath there. Just slightly while we pull the connector off. And these two airbag wires will go straight through. I'm gonna pull this cover off. Just grab under here and pull. To pull this cover off right here, I'm gonna take this Phillips head screw out right here. Oh, that piece broke. Another Phillips head screw right here. And then underneath the parking brake release handle, uh, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. You use a 10 millimeter socket, extension, and a ratchet. will slide out. It just slides back. There's two clips that hold that in. And this whole piece should pull straight out. There's clips. There's one that's broken there. There's other clips here that hold it in. Now we're going to pull this adjuster handle off of the steering wheel. Sometimes these are very difficult to pull off. Um, grab it with two hands and just pull it towards the outside of the car, and it'll come off. We're gonna release this. Um, this vehicle does not have any screws in these holes. Um, some vehicles may, so you might wanna double check. There might be some Torx screws or a seven millimeter. And then I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna grab this cover and pull it straight down. Grab it from the back, pull, and that'll pull straight down. There's clips that hold that in. Oh, it's just clipped in. Now we're gonna remove the snap ring. Um, you're gonna need some special snap ring pliers. You could probably try to do it with some picks, but it's a lot easier with snap ring pliers. Stick it in there. Squeeze it, and pull the snap ring right out. We can actually leave it right there on the pliers and set it aside. Before I pull this up, I just want to use a little bit of masking tape to prevent this clock spring from spinning. Um, sometimes there's a lock in them, but uh, I just double, for extra safety, I just make sure I tape it so that it doesn't spin, because this part will spin from the housing. This one does seem like it has a lock on it, but like I said, just so it doesn't spin, because if it spins, uh, it's gonna break and you will not be able to reuse it. All right, before I pull the clock spring up, um, there's a wire tie right here. I'm gonna just cut it with some cutters so that I have more, more room with the wires, less tension on the wires. I can pull it up. Just make sure my tape is there. Now I can disconnect the connector. Push a little flat blade tool into that lock. Pull the wire out, like so. So this wire is connected to the clock spring. We're gonna follow it down here. Goes all the way down here and over and over to this 
connector right here. We're gonna pull this orange lock out. Just grab this and pull down. Pull that. And then you can use your finger and just push on this other lock and then pull the connector up. So when you remove the connector, this is the little tab I pushed down. You could actually use a little screwdriver and push down to pull it out. You can fish the wires up. Oh, there is a, another tie down here. I'm going to use a trim tool. We actually sell these at 1aauto.com. Pull this one off first to get to the one that our wire is secured to. Let's connect that. And we can run it up here. Not through there. And there's another wire tie right here. I'm gonna cut that off. Be careful not to cut the wires. And then there's a lock right here that secures the wires. You just, to get this out, you just push down and pull this through like that. And then the wire comes out. And there's your clock spring. All right, so before we put this on, um, there's two arrows on this sensor. Um, this is the type that could spin all the way around and break, so we want to be careful with that. But when those two arrows are lined up, that pretty much states that the steering wheel is going straight. So you make sure those are lined up. So if you have a new one and you're putting it on, you will actually have a little lock on here where that orange piece is. Um, that once you install it and once everything's lined up, you actually break it off. But ours, where we're using it, ours is fine. So with all this lined up, I'm gonna start slipping it back on. Once this is lined up up here and lined up down there, it's safe for me to take the tape off because that won't spin. And I can take our snap ring, push it down a little bit our snap ring back on. Get the screwdriver to help me. And that's uh, locked back in. And that's good. You can reconnect this electrical connector. This one we're going to run back down below. The same way it came. You can slide this in up here. Right there. Container goes through this hole here. Now we'll send this back in here. Line that up. Now we're going to take this little orange lock. We're going to slide this back in through the tab like that, so it clicks in. And this wire, we're going to send that retainer up through there. So that locks in. I'm gonna install some new wire ties. Go over all the wires over here and then position this wire just like that. Pull it through. We'll cut the excess off like that. <clears throat> we had one more over here. 
go around all the wires. Pull it through. And we'll cut it right here. And install the top cover. Just slide it in the back like this. This rubber piece over here is going to slide in over here, like so. And you're going to line, line up the hazard switch. And then that's going to push down like that. And for the bottom one, we're going to take, you're going to line this U opening up with this rubber boot. Slide that in the back. It may take a little bit of adjustment. And there we go. It's on there. We install the adjuster lever. I'm gonna reinstall this cover. Line those, line these tabs up. That's right here and down there. And push it in. And we're gonna line this up. We're gonna slide it up and then slide it forward. Just like that. We can take our 10 millimeter bolt. While you hold the lever up, slide that in, tighten that down, tighten that up snug. We're gonna take our Phillips head screw. And our plastic piece is broken right here, but yours shouldn't be broken. And we have another screw, Phillips head screw right here. Just snug it. Now we'll install this cover. There's some tabs right here. You want to line those up. Now we're going to install our steering wheel with this connector. And we want to feed these two wires for the airbag through that hole there. As we're going down, we're going to connect this connector. Push it down. And then you see the arrow. You're going to line that up with the shaft of the steering wheel column. So we're going to reinstall the nut. The nut has a nylon retainer that pretty much locks the nut from loosening. So you want that facing you. You want that part of the nut up. Stick that on. Start tightening it with our 13 16 socket extension and ratchet. Right, so we're going to torque this nut to 30 foot pounds. This lock popped off when we were taking it out, so we're going to put that back in first. That. I don't want to push it all the way down. Just get it just in there like that. Now we'll reconnect our airbag. Um, so there's grooves in these terminals. Um, you can see there's two on there. You can see on the airbag, two grooves on that side. So this one goes in like this. And once that clicks, then you can push the lock down like that. And then this white one has one groove and the groove goes right there. Lock that and lock it. And the airbag's in the right position. Make sure the wires aren't pinched or anything. We can push it. And then we're gonna line these two little tabs up with those holes. 
push it down. And we're gonna reconnect our battery. Grab the negative cable. Hook it back up. Now I'm gonna use my 10 millimeter wrench and tighten down the nut. Not too tight. You don't wanna break the terminal. Tight it and check it, make sure it doesn't wiggle. Seems good. So we're gonna turn the key on. Uh, you want your body not pressed right up against the airbag. Um, it, it, this is a safe repair. It should not go off, but just in case something does happen, you want your body further away. So you can turn the key on. And we're gonna look at the airbag light right here. And it should flash seven times and then go out. And it did. And that means your airbag system is working properly. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.